What is a merchant account and how does it all work? Let's talk about that today. And in addition to that title content, we're gonna talk about the following. Credit card terminals, point of sale equipment, and the software that's available to you. The two most popular general credit card rate categories that apply and a reference to another video on my channel. Underwriting approval and account setup, guidelines and tips and important things to remember when applying for a merchant account, as well as some frequently asked questions. And towards the end, I'll tell you how to go about figuring out the best merchant account option for your business. So as we get started today, all of the content in this video is gonna be timestamped in the description for your reference. Everything that I talk about is pertinent and important to setting up and maintaining a merchant account, so please do watch the entire video, of course. And at the same time, I always try and make my videos easy to navigate and the content easy to digest. So for some of my videos on this channel, I'm gonna to link to timestamps to point you directly and straight to the section and the various content in the description. So if you wanna skip ahead, certainly go ahead and do that. You can just pop down to the description box, open it up, click the section, and you'll go right there. And if you use these timestamps to navigate the video, please let me know that it was a helpful thing to do so I can continue doing it. Now on with the lesson. Let's start with a simple definition of what a merchant account is. A merchant account is a specialized bank account that exists for the sole purpose of allowing a business to accept electronic payments through the use of credit and debit cards from their customers. The term merchant accounts often used interchangeably with terms like credit card processing account, merchant account, payment processing, payment service provider, or payment aggregator, and I've even heard people refer to it simply as a merchant. And speaking of that, a payment aggregator account is different than a true merchant account. We're gonna stay focused on the merchant account in today's video, so if you're interested in comparing aggregator companies like PayPal, Stripe, or Square to merchant account providers, click the link in the description because I've linked that video up and it should be on the cards on the screen here as well for that detailed comparison video after you're done watching this one. In short, an aggregator payment solution operates very differently than a merchant account, and there are some pluses and minuses to each option depending on your needs of your business. With a merchant account, you can use credit card terminals and various point of sale devices if you have a retail store, as well as setting up mobile and online applications if your business fits into either of those categories. Credit card terminals and point of sale equipment are normally associated with card present or retail environments. So most countertop terminals are gonna range from about $150 to $400, depending on the model, of course, and two very common terminal types are gonna be a Verifone VX520 or an Ingenico ICT220, just for example. If you're looking for something with more options that's a little bit more robust, you probably are well-suited for a point of sale system, and there's lots of options out there. Systems like the Clover, for example, can be obtained for about $1,000, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, again, depending on the version that you go with, like the Flex or the Clover Station, for example. But depending on the number of units and features that you add, that's really going to be the ultimate determinant on how much you're going to pay for the system. Other point of sale systems that are out there on the market, again, just to name a few out of a very long list, include Mint POS, Toast, Square, which again is a pain payment aggregator, but they also have a point of sale system for retail environment and NCR Silver. There are dedicated wireless credit card terminals as well as tablet-based systems and mobile phone comparable units with Android and Apple. So again, there's a lot of credit card terminal options and point of sale options. So depending on how your company's set up and the needs that you have for your business will determine what you get. Next, let's move on to the rate categories. So rates and costs. There's two main merchant account rate categories that are driven by card acceptance environment that exists within your business. And those two are simply card present or card not present. So are, do you have a retail environment where you can take the card physically from the customer and put it into a credit card machine or terminal? Or do you have a phone order or internet or online 
online environment where the customer puts the information in themselves or the car's not present. Card present rates are going to range from about a 1.25% rate up to 2%. So if you have a retail store or you operate in a situation where you can physically take the credit card from your customer and swipe or dip the card into a machine or hardware, you're getting a card present rate and you're in a card present environment. The physical reading of the credit card data is the critical component here. So cards that are swiped and dipped and even ones that use NFC contactless cards or contactless technology such as Apple Pay or Google Pay fall into the card present category. Card not present rates are going to range from about two to three and a half percent on average and it depends on a handful of variables there. If you're taking credit cards over the phone for example and key entering the card number whether it's into a virtual terminal which is a software online web-based often or your customer enters it into an online order form which is customer facing the card is still considered not present at the time of sale and thus the rates are a little bit higher than those card present rates due to the bank risk that's involved there are of course exceptions to this rule and there's a number of variables to these rate guidelines so as you'd imagine take them as general benchmarks as far as the rate categories go and if you want to dive into more detail on the specific rates and how they compare check out the video that's linked in the description which goes into uh, all of the details about merchant account rates so as you can see whether you're in a card present or card not present environment these things will determine determine to some degree the rates that you end up paying and furthermore proper setup of your merchant account will ensure that you're actually obtaining the lowest possible cost or the lowest rates that will be applicable to your company. It's extremely important to note that when setting up a merchant account it is very important to set it up properly as I just mentioned with specifically your your proper SIC code and the way that you process credit cards. So everything has to be coded correctly because if if you have misinformation like the the wrong SIC code or MCC code or things are just not categorized correctly, you could be paying different rates and sometimes higher rates than what you could otherwise qualify for. Now, if you're watching this video because you're doing research on how to set up a merchant account or a payment system, whether it be online or retail for your company, you can schedule a call with me or somebody on my team by going down to the description under this video there's literally thousands of different options to accept payments these days when it comes to choosing the right software tools and then the right merchant account or payment aggregator and if it's something that you're looking at once again and you want to make sure that you get it set up properly just click the links in the description you can book a call to talk with myself or someone on my team now on to underwriting most people don't look at it this way but a merchant account is actually a short-term loan and here's why due to the nature of how the money is collected and processed in other words the transaction flow or the cycle of the transaction the banks and processing companies are essentially paying you in advance for the money that is due to be collected. So in simple terms, when a customer pays for something on their credit card at the point of sale or online, the money is not collected until their billing cycle ends. So the bank and the processing company that pays your money out to you, you get that immediately or the next day. And again, it's being paid to you in advance with the assumption that there's no chargebacks or disputes on that particular transaction. So the banks are not reimbursed for that payment until the cardholder pays their bill 30 days or sometimes longer. And the fees associated with accepting credit cards go towards the costs associated with the transaction process, including the risk of loss that is inherently involved. So let's look at some common questions about merchant accounts. Number one, how long does it take to get an account set up? Typically, time frames range from about 24 to 48 hours for merchant account approval because, again, there is an underwriting process that, that uh, takes place with a merchant account, although it is becoming more and more common to get same-day approvals with lots of merchant account providers, so it can vary. High-risk merchant accounts typically can be approved in about one to three weeks because the approval times are generally a little bit longer. It's not always the case, but generally, speaking it, it, it does take a little bit longer because it's a more in-depth underwriting process and takes more application information 
What sorts of information is typically asked for at the time of application process? So there's a link in the description that'll give you a checklist and bullet points of, of what's common information, but typically it's standard company info, tax ID number, your bank account for deposits and personal information like social security and other ownership specific details. Can you have more than one merchant account for a business? Yes, of course, you can have as many merchant accounts for a single entity. And it's very common when you have a parent company that might have different locations or chain uh, restaurants or retail stores, things like that, where every individual location might have their own merchant ID number. And so you can apply for more than one merchant account, of course, under the same ownership umbrella, again, if it makes sense for your business. How do I apply for a merchant account? Well, the links are in the description. It can vary from one company to the next, but of course I have my recommendations. And once again, I of course can help you with this. Myself and my team can help you get an account set up and even linked into your e-commerce store, or your retail point of sale system. So check the links in the description. And last question to wrap it up, how will I know if my business will be accepted or is a type of merchant account that will work with my website my software and everything that I'm using at my business. So this is probably one of the most common questions that I do consultations for and talk with business owners about because the best way to find that out is to do one of two things. Number one, is to schedule an appointment with myself and my team to go through that. It's um, it, it's a case by case scenario. So if you are open to that, go ahead and click the links and schedule an appointment. Or number two, if you'd like, you can go over to our website and take the best fit survey to get some suggestions on what equipment and what software will work best for your business and your situation. If you're new here, welcome. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment that's always appreciated and it always helps out the channel so that these videos get suggested and shared and, and all that good stuff. So leave me a comment if you'd like, if you have additional questions or on any of the information that I shared here, please leave me a comment below or just reach out. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on new videos when they're posted. Uh, we, we publish videos on payment software and software tools and you know, videos just like this one here. So if you want more videos like that, hit the subscribe button, give me a like, and then hit the notifications bell so you get notified when new videos are released. I'm Brian Manning and I'll see you on the next one.